This morning uh, God has laid on my heart Psalm 73. Some of the words should come up in the screen, on the screen. The first verse says this. Surely God is good. Is that true? He's very good. To Israel. To those who are pure in heart. How are we doing? A way to go. Very true. If we're honest, we have a way to go. Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. The psalmist, the psalmist essentially was saying, those who do good, God will be good to them. You know, if, you, if you are good, if you do what uh, God says, if you go to church, if you go, in this case, the temple, good things will happen. He'll be good to you. No problem. Uh, there's an expression, I think it's in, um, when we were in Italy, people used to say, I have never done anything wrong. I would never harm a fly. I think it's a similar expression. In, to which I would say, well, I've killed many flies. <laughs> and the assumption was, I have been so good. Why is all this stuff happening to me? I don't deserve all this. I've been good. Really? So the psalmist start off with, it's like an affirmation. Yeah, just yeah, do good and everything good will happen. No problem. You know, there's a bed of roses. But then he continues. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. It was like, he, it was like in a religious affirmation, a little bit trite. You know, if, if I do good things, everything will, will be all right. But then he says, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold. Because what was happening? For I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. He had some problems. There were people that weren't doing good stuff. And what happened to them? Verse 4. They have no struggles. So how does this work? I thought, I was being good, everything, everything should be okay. Other people don't follow God. It looks like they're okay. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They are free from the burdens common to man. They're not plagued by human ills. Therefore pride is their necklace. They clothe themselves with violence. For their callous hearts, from their callous hearts comes iniquity. The evil conceits of their minds knows no limits. They scoff and speak with malice. In their arrogance they threaten oppression. Their mouths lay claim to heaven and their tongues take possession of the earth. They say what they want. Therefore their people turn to them. And they got lots of friends and drink up waters in abundance. They say, how does God know? Where's God anyway? Who cares about him? Does the Most High have knowledge? This is what the wicked are like. Always carefree. They increase in wealth. Surely in vain I've kept my heart pure. In vain have I washed my hands uh, in innocence. But what was really going on? In his heart, there was so much envy. You know, how come the others don't seem to be following God and they seem okay? Yet in my life happens this, this and this. It's like just full of envy and jealousy. So his heart is not quite right, is it? He's saying life is not fair. What's the point of being uh, good? And in verse 14, all day long I have been plagued. I have been punished every morning. And it feels like God is punishing me even. So how does this work, this following uh, God? And verse 15, if, but if I had said I will speak thus, I would have betrayed your children. When I tried to understand all this, it was oppressive to me. And it's almost like he couldn't, he was exploding. You know, if he had opened his mouth, what would have come out really? Maybe he did occasionally, but he was trying to hold himself in. He was just bursting with the injustice of it all. That's what, it is. That's what was happening. Yeah. He had tried to follow God in his way. He thought he was all right. He said, I'm innocent. I'm, 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 doing, I'm doing good. I'm really trying. 
but in his heart there was something happening and stirring and it was oppressive to him this kind of anger in his heart this frustration, this why but then verse 17 is quite a key little verse here until I entered the sanctuary of God like all this was going on in his heart and then at a certain point he entered into the sanctuary of God somewhere along the line he thought yes I, I thought I was doing okay but all this stuff ten verses worth is in my heart somehow he got to the sanctuary of God he got to the presence of the God and he began to be honest with God he began to express it and let it go to the God who loves us and this stuff what was really going on this so called religious good man what was really going on was another matter started to come out he had entered the sanctuary of God in honesty and that's where God meets us brothers and sisters it's not when we seem to be doing good pretend to be doing good and even when we even when we say God is good and that's a wonderful thing to do we need to do it but if our hearts are just full of all this stuff what do we do with that? God says come into the sanctuary open yourself to me let it go to me in the sanctuary and there amazingly enough something changed perspectives changed and then I understood their final destiny he got a new perspective of all these people who weren't following God who, who, who I don't know, swore did, every, did everything against what God wants then I perceived their destiny and surely you place them in slippery ground you cast them to ruin yeah you, it might be okay for a while but sooner or later judgment comes if it's not in this life it will be the next how suddenly are they destroyed verse 19 completely swept away by terrors they look as if they're doing okay but what's going on Whether they, might, they are full of fears as a dream when one awakes verse 20 so when you arise O Lord you will despise them yeah, that's fantasy so he realised yeah these people who don't follow God they can't do that forever they're going to meet with God one day there is there is a judgment for all the wrong things that are done so he began to get a new perspective on all this stuff out there and he also began to get a new perspective of himself he thought he was pure in heart he thought he was innocent and pure and okay then he got in the presence of God new revelation of himself and in verse 21 we have the revelation of himself when my heart was grieved literally when my heart was sour like vinegar and my heart embittered literally when my insides were torn up I was senseless and ignorant I was a brute beast before you hands up those who feel like a brute beast at times let's be honest <laughs> he got a revelation of himself he thought he was doing okay but then he realised in the presence of God he thought the others went with the evil ones then he realised pointing that finger over there three little fingers were pointing back at his own heart I was like a brute beast he realised really what was going on in his heart in this moment of meeting God of being honest with God and then wonderfully there's some of the most amazing verses in, in the Psalms he gets a new perspective of where God was and is yet yes the stuff of life happening people are awful to me etc bad things happen yet I I'm always with you you hold me by my right hand it's a new perspective of where God is in all this he is with him 
Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterwards you will take me into glory. There is an end to all this. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Yes, those who are far from you will perish. You destroy all who who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, it's it's less thinking about the others now. It's more God. As for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge. So I will tell of your deeds. So that's quite a lot of movement in one short psalm, 28 verses. First of all, he thought he was okay. He was doing the right thing. His heart was okay. But then he, what was in his heart came out and you just see him going down and down. The envy and the bitterness. And where is the justice on all this? And where is God on all this? And I am okay. And look at the others. And then he meets God. He meets him in the sanctuary and he sees the end of all things. He has a new perspective of his own heart and he has a new perspective of where God is, who is with him. So I love this psalm. It is so uh, beautiful. It speaks of our relationship with God and how we are healed in our spirit because stuff happens in life And it's so easy that our hearts become angered and embittered and our insides are torn out and we become sour like vinegar. But at that point of honesty with God, something changes. We are here to celebrate, to take the bread and take the wine. That is a point of honesty, isn't it? I have sinned. Not everybody out there. I have sinned. Someone needed to die for me on that cross to save me from my sins. We are coming at a place of honesty. Lord, I need your salvation. You died on that cross for me so that my sins could be forgiven, that I could be cleansed, that I can know you as Father. That is the point of honesty that we are having today. (laughs) Honesty with God. It's where we meet God. It's where we start our journey with him. It's where we continue with him. I don't know what you do though with sometimes when your hearts are like a brute beast within you. What, what do you do about that? I think there are a couple of, well, three alternatives really. One, we can keep it all in. Not very good. We just become more and more of a brute beast. Yeah? One day we will explode or it will cause effects in our bodies in terms of stress and other things or other things, headaches, I don't know anyway, leave it all in not a good idea go and dump it on everybody around some people do that some people keep it all in some people just speak everything that's going wrong to this person and this person and that person and just this horrible weight is on this person this horrible weight is on that person Yes, there's a moment to share and there's a moment to be prayed for and that is a wonderful moment of grace. But if all we're just pouring our stuff on somebody else, one after the other, we might feel wonderful at the end of that little moment that the other person won't be. There is a third alternative. That is to come to God. The only one who knows us and who loves us and cares for us. And that really is the moment of healing. When we come to God with this stuff. And we can be honest with God. That's the most amazing thing. That's one of the most, the biggest revelations that saved my Christian walk with the Lord. That I can be honest with everything that is going on in my heart. And if I think of a good father, if I think of a good father and his child, a good father would not want that child to be sort of hiding in a corner or going in another room and the father knows he's going through stuff 
that breaks a, fa- a good father's heart a good father would want that child to come before him and a good father would pick him up and even if that child was beating on his chest he would know that's not just a sort of rebellious act that's just frustration <laughs> but a good father would say it's alright my son it's alright my daughter it's okay let it all out That is the sanctuary of God, brothers and sisters. That is letting it out, whatever is going on. I really really learned this, uh, funnily enough, at Bible college. And I thought, I just need to praise God. True. I need to reverence God. True. But can I really tell him the stuff in my heart? He's a holy God. I remember going into a field one day because I was perturbed about something I was seeing on the news. It was one of those early moments in television history when uh, it showed famines in different parts of the world. I don't know if you remember, this is the Ethiopian famine. And I thought, where's the justice in all this? And and, and really I was getting angry with God. And I felt, could I say that this to God? And I just, I went into a field, I remember, and started just to express my frustration and my anger and sense of injustice and it seemed it surprised me but just to God himself and stuff came out and to be honest unsavory words came out I thought can't say that to God ask forgiveness but yet I poured out my heart to God and something changed and some new revelation of God touched me and while I poured out my heart to God about this injustice in the part of the world, two thoughts came to my mind. One was, I had remembered that in Europe there had been a bumper harvest of grain and there were these uh, warehouses full of grain. And because of our economic system, we thought it was better to keep it there than ship it to the need. So it just flashed, oh yeah, that's true. I'm blaming God yet we in Europe had the power and a bumper harvest of grain we could have gone and shipped this stuff out is that God's fault? no it's not and the other thought that came to my head was in the moment of crisis people do cry out to God just two thoughts that came to my mind and later I discovered many people were coming to the Lord in Ethiopia even despite and through this crisis So what am I trying to say is because I was honest with God and I let it go to him, a couple of thoughts came to me that satisfied me and I believe were from God. It's because he met me and he will meet each one of us in that moment of honesty. It's not when we pretend to be Christian or religious or this or that or good. It's in our moment of honesty. And that is the Father... That is the God that we love and to whom we are coming. And uh, shortly after that I read a very short book. Go home and read this book. The book of Habakkuk. It begins with Why, O Lord, all this injustice? That's where it starts. He was honest with God in his why. And God gave him an answer. Read it. We haven't got time to read it this morning. And then he says, but why this answer? This is not right. And God gave him another answer. And at the end of Habakkuk, it's because he was able to pour his heart out. He was able to say, at the end of that book, though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes in the vines, though the olive crop fails, yet I will rejoice in the Lord my Saviour. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. It's like Habakkuk went through that exact process. He was honest with God. He poured it all out. And because he had the courage to do that, he became a prophet. Because he heard God. And that blows me away. It wasn't some religious... Uh, ecclesiastical thing happening it was a why prayer it was an honest prayer and God helped him through that to get out what was in his heart the bitterness 
and the anger and the resentment and the injustice of it all. And God accepted that and answered him in his point of honesty. And one last scripture. The Psalms are full of dishonesty, aren't they? We read the praisey bits and they are wonderful. And many times in church we don't read these kind of things. But they are part of the stuff of life. And they are so honest. And that's why I love the Bible. It's not trying to put a wool over our eyes. Stuff happens and bad things happen. But what are we going to do about it? We can bring it to God. And the psalmist brought there the most awful thoughts to and, and feelings to God. I'm just going to read two verses which should shock you but they're from the Bible somebody in Psalm 109 had done the dirty to the psalmist and this psalmist says may his days be few may his children be fatherless and his wife a widow may his children be wandering beggars thus saith the Lord (laughs) (coughs) that is in the Bible and we might think what's that doing in the Bible it's doing something in the Bible because even the most hateful thought and feeling can be brought to our God and we have to be honest with it before saying oh yes there's hate in my heart I couldn't believe it but Lord forgive me now, then going on to, to f- forgiveness and love and a changed heart but it is this point of honesty it's honesty with God it's coming into this sanctuary where we pour it all out that we meet with God so go to the sanctuary brothers and sisters it could be in a field just speaking it all out to God to a park to your room And it could be here as we come with honesty. Yes, Lord, you know my heart. I give it to you. What can I do about it? I bring it to the only one who cares and loves me and knows anyway. Please take it. Please change me. Help me to love. Help me to forgive. As we shared on on Tuesday, Proverbs 4.23 Above all else, guard your heart because it is the wellspring of life if all this stuff in Psalm 73 is going on there is no life coming through but if we are honest God is faithful and just to meet us to take our anger to forgive us to wash us renew us and give us new hope for the future this psalm is finished with new hope you are with me Wow, even in this, you are at my right hand. Isn't this amazing? So the Lord says this morning, come to me. He says it so often, come to me. All you who are weary and burdened and oppressed with stuff going on, and I will give you rest. So let us come this morning to the sanctuary and lay before him whatever it is I don't know what's going on in your life he can take it all we can be honest with him he is our good father not a distant father he is there who picks up his little girl who picks up his little boy and brings him yes I love you I know let it out I will help you I will be there I will change you I will give you new hope. So let us come, brothers and sisters, to this sanctuary as well, place of honesty, of openness before God, and just bring whatever it is to him. Ask his mercy, his help, his forgiveness, his washing afresh. Come to me, says the Lord. Let's just take a moment to come to him.